Now for this next part, we're told then that for this curve, x squared minus 2xy plus 3y squared equals 50, that the points P and Q are furthest west and furthest east, respectively. And we've already established the gradient in the previous part of the question for any point on this curve. And we've got to find the coordinates then of this point P. Well, the gradient at this point P here, you can see the tangent is vertical. That gradient is going to be infinite. And for that gradient to be infinite, we would expect the denominator here to be zero, because when you divide something by zero, it gives you an infinite or undefined value. So that's what we're going to be working with. We're going to make 3y minus x equal zero. Find out from that equation what x is in terms of y, substitute it into this equation, get a quadratic in y and solve it. And then we can substitute that y value, the appropriate y value, back into our original equation, 3y minus x equals zero, and establish what the corresponding x coordinate would be. OK, so that's the method. And we'll just crack on then with that. So I'm just going to write a few notes here, though, that at P, all right, the gradient we know is going to be infinite. OK, gradient is infinite. And that means that the denominator in our fraction here, the 3y minus x, must equal 0. And from this, we can rearrange it. I should put equal 0 there. We can rearrange it, and we can see that x will equal 3y. So if I call this equation number 1 and this equation here number 2, what I'm going to do is substitute equation 2 in 1. OK? And by doing that, I'm now going to have x squared, which will now be 3y all squared, minus the 2 times the x, which is 3y, times another y, plus 3y squared, and that's going to equal the 50. And we'll just border this off, come down here. And if we carry on, what we've got here is 9y squared. So we've got 9y squared. And then we've got minus 6y squared there. And plus another 3y squared. And that equals 50. So we end up with a total of 6y squared here equals the 50. So we have 6y squared equals the 50. Divide both sides by 6. You end up with y squared equals 50 over 6. That reduces. We can divide top and bottom by 2. And that gives us 25 over 3. So if we take the square root to both sides, y would normally be plus or minus the square root of 25 over 3. Well, we only want the negative value, not the positive value, because the y coordinate, p, is clearly negative. And if you square root this fraction, square root of 25 is 5. And in the denominator, we we'll just leave it as root 3. You could leave it like that, or you might want to rationalize this by multiplying top and bottom here by root 3. And if you do that, you're going to end up with minus 5 root 3 all over 3. Remember, we're forgetting uh, the positive value because since y must be a negative value, it must be less than 0. OK? Having got that, we can now substitute that value back into equation 2. So I'll put sub in 2 here. That will give us our x coordinate now. So we therefore have x equals 3 times the y value, 3 times the negative 5 root 3 over 3. And that gives us, well, those 3's cancel out, just minus 5 root 3. 
So therefore, the coordinates of P, if we just summarize, OK, are going to be minus 5 root 3 for the x coordinate. And for the y coordinate, it's up here, minus 5 root 3 over 3. OK, notice, by the way, how we have to have them in exact form. So just leave them with those root 3s in and express them as fractions as well.